When I started sixth grade, the other kids made fun of Brian and me because we were so skinny. They called me spider legs, skeleton girl, pipe cleaner, two by four, bony butt, stick woman, bean pole, and giraffe. And they said I could stay dry in the rain by standing under a telephone wire. At lunchtime, when other kids unwrapped their sandwiches or brought their hot meals, Brian and I would get out books and read. Brian told everyone he had to keep his weight down because he wanted to join the wrestling team when he got to high school. I told people that I had forgotten to bring my lunch. No one believed me, so I started hiding in the bathroom during lunch hour. I'd stay in one of the stalls with the door locked and my feet propped up so that no one would recognize my shoes. When other girls came in and threw away their lunch bags in the garbage pails, I'd go retrieve them. I couldn't get over the way kids tossed out all this perfectly good food. Apples, hard-boiled eggs, packages of peanut butter crackers, sliced pickles, half pint cartons of milk, cheese sandwiches with just one bite taken out because the kid didn't like the pimentos in the cheese. I'd return to the stall and polish off my tasty finds. There was at times more food in the wastebasket than I could eat. The first time I found extra food, a bologna and cheese sandwich, I stuffed it into my purse to take home for Brian. Back in the classroom, I started worrying about how to explain to Brian where it came from. I was pretty sure he was rooting through the trash too, but we never talked about it. As I sat there trying to come up with the ways to justify it to Brian, I began smelling the bologna. It seemed to fill the whole room. I became terrified that the other kids could smell it too, and that they'd turn and see my overstuffed purse, and since they knew I never ate lunch, they'd figure out that I had pinched it from the trash. As soon as class was over, I ran to the bathroom and shoved the sandwich back in the garbage can. Maureen always had plenty to eat since she had made friends throughout the neighborhood and would show up at their houses around dinner time. I had no idea what Mom and Lori were doing to fend for themselves. Mom, weirdly, was getting heavier. One evening when Dad was away and we had nothing to eat and we were all sitting around the living room trying not to think of food, Mom kept disappearing under the blankets on the sofa bed. At one point, Brian looked over. Are you chewing something? he asked. My teeth hurt, Mom said but she was getting all shifty-eyed, glancing around the room and avoiding our stares. It's my bad gums. I'm working my jaw to increase the circulation. Brian yanked the covers back. Lying on the mattress next to Mom was one of those huge, family-sized Hershey chocolate bars. The shiny silver wrapper pulled back and torn away. She'd already eaten half of it. Mom started crying. I can't help it, she sobbed. I'm a sugar addict just like your father is an alcoholic. 